Welcome to Sandra's Homespun Life, where I make all things yummy. Today I am making a simple spaghetti, but I'm using a spaghetti squash instead of regular spaghetti. I'll be using my Ninja Foodie with Smart Lid for this recipe. So to begin, I'm going to cut the squash right across the middle. I scoop out all of the seeds from the centers of both halves. And since my squash weighs just a little over four pounds, I will also cut each one of the halves in half so that they will all fit nicely in the pot of the Ninja Foodie. Now I drizzle each part with a little olive oil and then season with some salt and pepper. After I have my spaghetti squash prepped and seasoned and ready to go, I pour one cup of water in the Ninja Foodie and then place a steam trivet inside. Then I lay each piece of the spaghetti squash into the pot. I lower the lid and move the selection slider to the pressure position. I leave the pressure set to high and then set the timer for 18 minutes. I also leave the pressure selection on the natural release option. I also make sure that my pressure valve is in the sealed position. And then I press start. The Ninja Foodie will preheat for approximately 20 minutes before it starts the cooking process. Once the cook time is up, the Ninja Foodie will automatically switch over to the natural release. I allow the Ninja to do a natural release for about 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes, I turn the pressure valve to release any pressure that may be remaining in the cooker. Then I move the slider tab over in order to disengage the lock and raise the lid. I remove the spaghetti squash over to a casserole dish and cover with saran wrap and set it aside. Now it's time to begin the sauce. I begin by moving the selection tab over to the far right, the air fry and stovetop selection. I turn the knob until the saute mode is highlighted and then click start and allow the pot to come up to heat. For my sauce, I will be using some very basic ingredients. One pound of mild Italian sausage, a pound of extra lean ground beef, some diced onion, minced garlic, a little bit of Italian seasoning, and a jarred pasta sauce. Once the pot has come up to heat, I add the Italian sausage and ground beef. And I use my wooden spatula to help break up the meat. I then add my diced onion and minced garlic and Italian seasonings. And I just allow that to set and simmer, stirring occasionally and cook it until it's all the way cooked through and no longer pink. Once it's cooked through, I simply add my jarred pasta sauce and then I stir to combine and mix it well. I then allow the sauce to simmer until it is heated through. And once it is well heated through, I turn off the Ninja Foodie. Now I return back to the spaghetti squash and remove the saran wrap. Using a fork, I shred each section of the squash. It should resemble spaghetti. I then discard the outer holes. From there, I just take my sauce and pour over the spaghetti squash, and it's ready to serve. I sprinkled some grated Parmesan on mine to add extra flavor. So my final thoughts on this recipe is overall it was a very good recipe, had great flavor. Every bite of it was eaten by my family. Uh, even my pickiest eater said it was good. So that's saying a lot. And the fact that none of it got thrown out, I think that speaks for itself. There are a few changes I would make and will make next time I make this. And one of those being I will probably cut about five maybe even 10 minutes. I'm, I'm going to have to find that happy medium. But I probably cut five, at least five minutes off of the cook time. 
And instead of doing a natural release, I'll do a quick pressure release. While the spaghetti squash was still good, it was very soft. And I would have liked to have had a little bit of more of a texture and consistency to the squash myself. Um, but like I said, it was still a great recipe. But yeah, I think it would have been better if it wasn't quite as soft. Another thing I'll do after I fix it next time is after I've shredded the spaghetti squash, I'm going to put it over in a colander and drain off any excess liquid that might still be remaining. I didn't do that that last time. It was okay, but it did water down my sauce just a little bit. So next time I'll make sure to drain that off. And one final thought, and this isn't anything necessarily to do with how I fix the recipe, but I had an ideal that next time I fix it, I'm going to take some shredded mozzarella cheese and top that and throw it in the oven under the broil, allow that cheese to melt and brown on the top, and that's going to make it more like a baked spaghetti. So I think that'd be really good. So I'll probably try that next time. But anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please consider checking out another one of my videos. And until next time, guys, bye.